Welcome to Small Biz Flash, your briefing on small business news, trends, and insights. I'm your host, Adam Hewitt. Thanks for joining me. Today, we'll talk about the recent bank failures and how you can potentially protect your company's assets in the event your bank goes bust. That's coming up right after the news roundup. All right, let's dive in. The vast majority of small business owners, 90%, lack confidence that they have adequate insurance coverage, according to a new study from Next Insurance. 53% of small business owners said their greatest barrier to getting insurance coverage is simply knowing what kind of insurance package their business needs. Inflation tops just about every poll of small business owners right now as far as their chief concern, and this one is no exception at 68%. But the top insurance-related concern was making a professional mistake at 51%. 39% of small business owners said an injury or illness that sidelines their employees would negatively impact their business, while 36% said that cyber attacks are a primary risk. The Federal Trade Commission has launched an inquiry into the Small Business Credit Reporting System, and given five players in that industry 90 days to respond to questions regarding how they gather information on businesses and what steps they take to ensure the data is accurate, among others. Individual consumers have the right to challenge inaccuracies in their credit reports under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, but there's no corresponding federal law that specifically outlines the processes and protections available concerning business credit reports. Last year, the FTC sued Dun & Bradstreet for allegedly deceptively claiming its products would help small businesses improve their reports. Three antitrust advocates have launched the Responsible Online Commerce Coalition to push back against Amazon's influence over the e-commerce ecosystem, in which a lot of small businesses participate. The group will lobby Washington to curtail Amazon's power. Several companies that sell on Amazon have committed to joining, including small third-party sellers, but none have publicly announced yet. The founders say many companies fear Amazon's retaliation. Small business owners, your finances are the cornerstone of your business. You need the bookkeeping pros at SBS Accounting and Advisors to keep your AP, AR, and financial statements on track. For 16 years, the good folks at SBS have been helping owners like you make better decisions and grow their profits. So go to sbsaccountants.com today to set up a free 30-minute consultation. Use the promo code FLASH to get 20% off your setup fee. Again, that's sbsaccountants.com. Earlier this month, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB, followed almost immediately by Signature Bank, got a lot of smaller businesses' attention. Chances are, few of the commercial depositors had checked into these banks' health before doing business with them. But even if they had, the Wall Street Journal reports that SVB's trouble wasn't reflected in credit ratings. And anyway, who expects their bank to become insolvent? But now, in small businesses around the country, directors of finance and CFOs are asking some hard questions. Many businesses that banked with SVB were initially under the impression that deposits with the bank over the $250,000 FDIC insured limit would be lost. And there was a lot of money over that limit. As of late last year, around 95% of the accounts were uninsured. For a lot of small businesses, this would be a cataclysmic event, The end, game over. The good news for the companies doing business with SVB and Signature Bank is that within days, the federal government said it would make them whole even beyond the $250,000 limit. So in these two instances, small business depositors dodged a bullet. Will the federal government jump in the next time a bank fails to so generously rescue depositors? There's no guarantee. So you need to take an active approach to ensure that you don't find yourself in this situation. What can you as a small business owner or manager do to protect your assets, especially if you must keep high amounts of operating capital? 
One option is to spread your funds across multiple banks so your accounts do not exceed $250,000 at any one institution. The advantage is you never have to worry about your deposits being uninsured. But, of course, there is a big drawback, the operational headache of working with two or more banks. While this might make sense for some companies in certain situations, it's probably not the best solution. Another option is to utilize programs called ICS and CDARS by a company called Intrify, using a network of banks where you can build up funds across member institutions to gain more than the normal $250,000 in FDIC-backed insured deposits. You can put as much into the Interfi system as you'd like, but still have all your deposits operate in one functional account, because Interfi spreads the money across member banks for you. You'll get one statement, though your funds are allocated to multiple banks. Interfi has thousands of member banks, so if your bank isn't a member, chances are there's one nearby that is. A third option is a program called MacSafe, offered by Wintrust Community Banks. It has the ability to let businesses get FDIC coverage up to $3.75 million. There may be other options too, so talk with your banker or finance professional. Thanks for listening to Small Biz Flash. I'm your host, Adam Hewitt. If you enjoy the show, please help me to expand its reach by telling one other person about the podcast. I sure do appreciate it, and I'll see you next week.